I'm Chosen Architect, and this is All the Mods Volcano Block. Now, last episode, we ended up getting all of our ore processing done. And today I want to beef up our power. Our power is definitely lacking and uh, we do need some wireless power options. So today we should have all of the resources now to be able to get into that. But before we do, I have another special visitor here, the Wandering Trader, and it's offering a Sharpness 5 Mending, Looting, Capturing, Unbreaking, uh, Captive Dream Sword, which is an amazing sword to get because it has a chance of dropping uh, Spawn X from mobs that are killed with it. This could be very helpful. Plus, that sharpness is really great and that looting. Oh, and later on, we can rip the enchants off of that and potentially put it on any tool that we want those on. Uh, so let's grab some emeralds and we should also make ourselves a sword, a diamond sword, right? To be able to buy this. Oh, this is such a good buy. Oh, I love, I love when the villagers actually are, are selling something that's worth wild. Uh, and now that we're done with this villager, well, we can just offer them to the lava gods. Goodbye, sir. Have a good day. Eventually, that's going to bite me in the butt. I'm almost guaranteed. So when it comes to power, well, we have many options in this pack, and I've only really used one of those options, which was the Mechanism Wind Power. Of course, we have Mechanism Overall as an amazing mod that can produce tons of power. But there's also one of my favorite power mods in this pack. No, 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 not power. I'm talking bigger reactors. And there's even an entire quest line built around it. Now, the awesome part about this is we have all of the resources to set this up and get it automated and producing tons of power. Uh, and we could probably build uh, one that's larger than like the smallest size. So we should have all of the resources and it even lines out all of the reactor um, uh, moderators here, right? It does, I'm pretty sure it talks about it. Um, oh, it talks about unobtainium blocks are considered one of the best ones. Oh, of course that's going to be the best. That is the hardest thing to get. Um, so we're gonna have to figure out, I think platinum's pretty good. Uh, I might have to look here and see, it may list it actually in JEI, uh, but we need to get all of these items going and get ourselves a, uh, a reactor set up. Uh, now, one of the main things we're gonna need a lot of is coal. Uh, so we just need to simply smelt coal and, uh, or charcoal, which I have tons of charcoal produced, and that is gonna make graphite. And then outside of that, it's just going to be combining that with their uranium and iron, and we'll get all the reactor parts we need. So if you're a little bit of crafting, this is basically all of the stuff we're gonna need. Well, not counting all of the reactor casing, this is just future prep. But the main stuff that we are going to need is going to be at least a reactor control rod. We're gonna need a, at least one fuel rod. We're gonna need at least one of the terminals uh, because you need a terminal to access the reactor. And then you need a power tap, and then you're going to need an input and output via these access ports. Uh, so really, this is all you need, and of course, enough to wrap the case around it. Uh, and you can make this incredibly small. You know, and it, you can make a 3x3. Three three. That is going to be the smallest size. Of course, I'm going to end up making a larger one than a 3x3. Three three. But just to show how the 3x3 three three looks, this right here is as simple as it gets. So we put our uh, reactor control rod here. The fuel rod goes in the middle. And if you're making the smallest one, probably best you put the excess ports on the sides. And of course, these can be changed. You can change the mode of them uh, once you create this. And then of course, you need a way to get power out. So you put that on the bottom or the top or the sides. And then we need access to the reactor terminal after this is finally closed up. And so we place the terminal in and that creates the reactor. And there we go. So we have all of this set up. And of course, these now can be changed. So we have this by default, it's set to input. And uh, we can change the other one to output. And I think you can uh, input and output from the same one. Uh, oh, it does not appear to be. It looks like you literally have one, but you can output fuel or you can output waste. And you can also set it to eject all of the waste uh, when needed because it, it has to reach, I believe, a th certain threshold before it will actually eject the waste. So you'll have your input for your uranium, and then over here, you'll have the output that is going to send out the, um, what is it called? Plutonium? Uh, cyanite? I think it's plutonium, and then that gets reprocessed, or it's cyanite, and that gets reprocessed. I don't remember. It's either one of those. Ah, it does, in the quest here, it does appear to be cyanite. I just had to remember that. 
Now, uh, when making yourself a reactor, if you want to expand upon this, uh, I recommend setting up your uh, your control rod, which goes to the top of the reactor. I recommend setting them up in this sort of pattern, giving you space in between them, so that way you can put uh, the things that it recommends here, the, the moderators, right, that are going to help make this more efficient. Um, and a really good early one is going to consist of five like this. And so I'm going to go ahead and build a reactor that's based off of five. Now, there's a couple of things you want to keep in mind. The height of the reactor means it will most likely generate more power because it can store more fuel. Uh, and, but the width of it is going to make it a little bit more efficient. So uh, if you have more space in between the walls of your reactor, be more efficient. And of course, the taller it is, the more fuel it can hold. The more reactors you have, of course, the, the more power that's going to produce overall. So I think in my case, with the resources that we have, I think setting up a five by five by seven or a five by seven by five uh, is going to work out really good. And I want to do this in a very interesting way. Uh, typically, I think you want to stay away from putting your... Um, your rods uh, against the casing because you want to give yourself more space. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to actually place the rods uh, one here, 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 and here. And that is going to give me uh, places to put the mo uh, modifiers, the moderators. <laughs> it's so weird getting used to that. Uh, I need to place the moderators here. It's going to be give me a lot of space for moderators. Uh, and we're only, only going to have four reactor control rods in this. Now I'm going to try platinum for right now because it does say that rare materials uh, tend to be better. And in our case, I would consider platinum a pretty rare material, definitely up next to emeralds and things like that. And we, I think we have enough of it. Uh, so this is how it's going to go. We're going to set this like so. And then our uh, reactor fuel rods are going to go in like this. And then of course, in the middle, it's just going to repeat this same pattern until we get all the way up to the top. Now, is this going to be the best reactor for this size? Uh, absolutely not. I guarantee there are way better ways of doing this, uh, but this is just how I'm going to be doing it at the moment. Uh, so it's going to leave us with this, right? It should look pretty decent once you get it done. I do want to put a, a little bit of reactor glass on the front, just so we can kind of see the materials that are inside. Uh, can even get fancy with it and add that there. But the majority of this is going to get completely covered. Of course, it'll look way better once it's all set up. Uh, and I think the ports, I'm going to put the same way I set up on the other one. One on this side and one on the other side. And then the power tap, I'm going to actually put that into the back. And then there's also this reactor redstone port. I'm going to put that in here uh, just to see what it, uh, what it does and if it has any sort of interface that we can access. But that will give us an emergency shutoff switch if we want to hook up something later that detects our power usage and stuff like that. Uh, but for right now, this should be ready to assemble. And we're missing the roof, right? <laughs> I put everything on here except for the roof. You know what would be really helpful? How about some creative flight? I was just thinking about that. And uh, we could probably make ourselves the, uh, the flight tablet, right? So what do we need? We need uh, vexing wood. And there we go. Perfect. Ah... Nice. So we have ourselves some vexing wood and let's go ahead and set this up. So the only thing this particular ritual needs um, is just a little bit of mana. That's really it. Um, so all we need to do is make sure we have some jars that can be filled with mana. And we just put this inside of a ritual brazier and it's going to pull from them. And then we just right click here to activate it. And now when I double tap, it's going to activate flight, consuming a little bit of mana from these. And now I have a creative flight. And of course, I, I can just go over here for the short duration to activate it. It does have a pretty decent range. Should cover most of our base. And uh, yeah, it gives us a, a flight. And, and while we're maintaining this flight, it'll keep uh, using up the mana uh, every time it, it runs out of time and give me more time. Pretty darn cool and very easy. Um, so I need to figure out why is this not activating? Oh, the, the whole back. <laughs> I missed the entire back of the machine. Typical, typical me. And the sides. So now after putting the last block in, we now have this really nice looking reactor. Um, and we just need to give it some fuel and let it run. Now, this is not a reactor that will explode. Uh, so don't be scared of this. This is a very straightforward generator. It's not going to go boom on you and destroy your whole base. Even if it you push the temperatures all the way up to max. That's just something you're not going to have to worry about. Uh, now, in this case, it does store 13 million, 
uh, RF or FE. As you can see, this hasn't really changed, but a lot of them use FE forge energy now. Um, and then this will be your waste input. And so waste and fuel. So we need to start getting fuel in here. And so the best way for us to sort of semi-automate that right now is to probably tap into the bottom of the storage lectern and have it specifically pull out of our storages the uranium. Uh, or we can manually put it in for right now. Either would work. I would prefer, though, uh, to eventually have this automated. But this will get us some nice power, allowing us to increase our usage of our machines that are smelting things. Now, you know what? This might be a good time to utilize some frame drawers. Uh, and I want to use the reactor casing for the frame drawers. And look at that. That is a reactor casing framed drawer. And it has the same functionality as all of the other drawers. And we can place that here. And then we can just put our uranium in this. And we can set up a pusher that'll end up pushing that into the reactor. And then this will be set to output. And then this one will have a puller that'll pull the output out here. Now, I was hoping this was going to work, but it does not appear to be pushing. So we might have to just utilize a pipe. It doesn't seem like the uh, the pusher upgrade is actually functioning here. Um, yeah. How when all else fails? Well, it's time to use this. And as you can see, that did work. And that is now pulling that in, which means over here, we are going to do the opposite and have it pull the output. Uh, and so with it filling up, we want to kind of let it to get, uh, we want to let it get to uh, full. And as you can see right here, it's starting to fill up and show it visually. But once it does reach full, then uh, it's time to kick this bad boy on and see the power start to generate. Oh boy. Uh, and I think that is it for our fuel. And so this is where just taking more fuel going to be a good idea and just we'll just toss it in here and just let it roll for right now right i don't think it's going to use a whole lot we're going to be able to see what the millibucket burn rate is going to be right now we have 80 buckets worth of fuel in here and so when we kick this on you're going to see it's going to be using about two three millibuckets a tick to actually run and this generator is going to generate sixteen thousand rf per tick which is not bad for the resources that we put into it. It's already got over 5 million generated. Now, this is where I wanted to see, does our back port here? Yes, it does have an option. So on trigger, so we have some things that we can adjust for, casing temperature, fuel, and then output storage here. Uh, and so we can have this trigger the redstone after a certain amount. I'm gonna have to give this a look. And then we can change the reactor port to do different things. Hmm. Ah, interesting. So over here, we have uh, this mode right here, reactor redstone port. So I think this is a receive signal and then does an operation. This over here outputs a signal based on what's going on with the reactor. And I think to be really efficient with our fuel, it'd be best to have this either trigger while above on our uh, battery. So we can say when the battery goes below 95%, uh, we can say when that happens, turn it on. Honestly, 80% would be pretty good as well. Uh, so if it goes below 80%, then we want to trigger a red sun signal. Um, at the moment it is uh, shut off and, or we could do if it's above 80%, uh, to send a red sun signal, but it depends on how this is going to operate. It says trigger on signal. Um, and this will change the reactor status. Uh, and I need to figure out how that actually needs to function. Yeah, we definitely want this set to toggle. And it says right here, active only when provided with the redstone signal. So if we know that the signal needs to be on for the reactor to be powered, then that actually changes how we want this to be set up. So for this, because of the way that this is set up, we want this to be set up to be while below a certain signal, uh, we want, or while below a certain level, we want it to emit a signal. That way, when the level goes low enough, it'll send the signal and turn the reactor back on. Uh, but whenever it gets above that signal, it will shut the reactor off. So we can say 80%, I think is perfect. And it will say while below, and that should emit a signal to this when this power drops. At the moment, it's not emitting a signal. And then this needs to be set to triggered on signal. Uh, and so it'll be while it's in an on state or while it is powered with redstone, uh, it will activate. 
So we just need to get some basic redstone components here uh, to get this working. We don't have to invert or anything. We literally just need to carry the signal from here over. Uh, I think just some basic redstone should actually work. Uh, and we can even use some casing <laughs> just to kind of make this sort of fit in here. Um, I'm assuming this is going to give a max power signal. And so if we just extend... Oh, we actually can't use this because it'll it'll break. Ah, interesting. Okay. So maybe we can just use this. Yeah, that'll be fine. We'll just use this wood for right now. Uh, and all we're going to do is just bridge the gap, right? We just need to carry the signal from here to this. Um, now, we won't be able to see this in practice just yet. Uh, not until we have a load on the power. So now, how exactly are we going to get power from here to everywhere else in our base? You may be wondering, without making a mess of cables. Well, that's where Flux Networks is going to become the best. Uh, it's going to be absolutely goaded, and I am ready to get into this. Um, the only thing we need to get started with Flux Networks is Obsidian and Crying Obsidian. So a bucket of water is what we need, and thankfully we have our stuff set up with the water essence so we can just craft a bucket without needing to go through the hassle of going and finding some. So, uh, one crying obsidian should get the job done, and then we're also going to need regular obsidian, and then just a bunch of redstone. I usually like to do a handful of redstone right off the start for this, and let's do this right here, just because it, it kind of uh, fits, right? So if we put this redstone the next to the or putting the crime city in right here uh we can then toss our redstone onto this just like that it looks like some of them of course hit the floor i don't know is there a better way for me to stand usually i'll end up picking it all up which is why okay that'll end up working and i don't know uh if there's a maximum amount that this will work with but all i have to do is place it here and then this is where it gets it, it got me for the longest time we have to punch this not left click not shift right click or whatever, or we have to left click and punch it. Uh, and yes, as you can see, that ended up producing cobblestone, which is interesting, but it did convert the majority of this over, which uh, is exactly what I want to see. It looks like it did eight stacks, which is uh, interesting. So let's go ahead and toss some more. It does look like it uses up the obsidian. So there we go and punch it again. Perfect. This should last us for quite a while. I will I will say that. This uh, should have no problem lasting us. And this is all the flux dust that we're going to need for all of the crafting recipes. Now, I waited till this point because we needed ender pearls for this. So thankfully, we have tons of ender pearls. So there's really no need now anymore to worry about uh, ender pearls because we're mob farm. But uh, early on, I was definitely like, oh, I can't get into this right now because I just don't have a mob farm. So now that that mob farm's up, it really saves a lot of hassle. Um, so flux networks. There's a lot to this mod and it is incredibly powerful, even though it looks super simple. Uh, the flux controller, probably one of the most powerful blocks will give us wireless power to our inventory. The flux plug is going to send power from a network and our flux or sorry, our flux plug is going to receive power from a source to our network. And then our flux point is going to send power from our network. It does tell you, of course, in all of these uh, little settings here. Um, now, these require flux cores, which, of course, eyes of ender. We do have blaze powder. However, we do not have blaze rods yet. That'll require us killing some blazes to get the rods or doing some compacting. There are a couple of recipes that can make the rods. But for right now, my main priority is to make as many of these as I can for right now. That way I can just simply make a plug on demand and get all of these uh, individual components set up. So a plug is really what we need to get started. And then we can tap in to our main network right now that we have set up with just a single flux point. So I'm also going to make this. This is our controller. But to hook into this power and to actually start using it right away, let's get that done. I think the best way to demonstrate this is to place the plug itself onto the power source. And then we need to go over to the create new network. And I'm going to set this to public. If you're on a server, of course, encrypt it. And uh, we'll call this main power. Uh, this is just the name of our network overall, not this, not this uh, very specific point, right? So this is just going to be what we can start with. And uh, later on, we can actually have multiple networks and they can be doing their own thing and all kinds of interesting stuff. This mod is, like I said, it's small, but it's so powerful. And then, of course, I'm going to change it to whatever color. 
I usually either go with red or orange. I like orange. I'm gonna go with orange. And then once we have that done, we need to select it to make it the network. Now you do have some priority stuff. Right now, I'm not worried about it. We're just gonna leave it by default. There's nothing that really needs to be changed just yet. Now, this is where the magic is going to happen because all of these cables here could probably go eventually. Uh, for right now though, I am going to tap into this network and by doing that, I'm going to place a point on here. This point can now send power uh, from that source wirelessly. So this can now send power. However, we do need to use the wrench on here in order to set it to send mode. So now as you can see, or receive mode. So now it is receiving, but this does have a maximum of 512. And so that generator is producing way more than that. So let's go ahead and put an advanced upgrade in that specific slot. And now this should be able to send 65,000 RF per tick, which is way more than enough to handle all of our components and everything like that. Meaning I should be able to now take this and actually set it to go the max speed. So let's do that. Let's toss in the other four speed upgrades to go even faster. It's going to be using a thousand RF per tick and it's easily handling all of that, easily handling it. Uh, and our reactor is incredibly efficient at the moment uh, because it should only power on once this drops down to below 80%. Uh, and it will not use any of our fuel until that point. Oh, which is so good. So, so good. Using this basically is a giant battery. Now, another amazing thing that we can do with Flux Networks, of course, is use our controller. And I can put this really anywhere uh, and you can move it later on, but you place it down, select your network, and then the wireless charging part is the most important. You can just select the slots that you want everything to be charged from, including your Kiro slots, and then make sure you enable it and bam, there you go. You have wireless charging at a moment's notice. Uh, you can also bypass the limit here. Uh, this bypasses what you have set to the transfer limit. Uh, or you can manually set your transfer limit to like a thousand if you really wanted to limit and you had minimal power and you didn't want to just overwhelm your network. There's all kinds of stuff like that. Priority is also really nice. If you want to make sure that you have a jetpack and you have like your network set up and you're running low on power uh, and you want to make sure that your backpack gets priority charged over everything else, you probably want to set this to a higher priority so it has the higher priority over everything else because... It would be pretty bad if your jetpack runs out of power while you're, I don't know, let's doing something like flying over the, the void <laughs> of the nether. Yeah, that, that would be pretty bad. So I'm thinking this bad boy is going to last us quite a while. Now, if you're wondering what the max size of the reactor can be, I think they mention it here inside of the quests. And, and it is quite large. It's like 256 by like 256 or something like that. It's some massive number. Is It's under the expanding... The reactor i think expand your reactor yeah 128 by 128 by 192 that is huge that is huge that uh that that's definitely that should be something we do i <laughs> would love to see what that looks like in the future oh you just seen it it just toggled on by the way you just missed it but i, I just i just seen it happen it toggled on for a split second and you can see that it did activate how cool is that? Now, there's still a few things that we have left to do, and that is, well, we need to get the product over here. We need to get this uranium over here, and, uh, well, we could use modular routers for this now. I know a lot of you guys have been telling me in the comments, chosen to use modular routers, I can clean everything up, and yes, that is 100% what is going to end up happening. Modular routers is incredibly powerful uh, and uh, is in this pack, so let's dive into modular routers. So first of all, uh, we need to make the actual modular router itself, right? That's pretty straightforward. And the reason why I haven't, uh, I haven't gotten into it until now is because a lot of the later game things that are like wireless, well, they require ender pearls. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, I didn't have access to ender pearls until recently. So with this, all we have to do is make some cinder modules and puller modules and we should be golden to be able to transfer items long distance and, uh, and do it wirelessly. Um, so, uh, we're also going to need, I believe, range upgrades. So range upgrades will allow us to extend further than the basic 24 range up to 48 blocks away. Whereas the Cinder MK3 doesn't have a range. Uh, however, the MK3 also requires an Ender Chest and Endstone. It's actually not that expensive 
you know, con considering the uh, the resources we currently have available. So uh, I'm going to need some puller upgrades and I'm going to try out the Cinder MK2s. So now these things are incredibly powerful. Like I said, underneath this, I can set up a puller and now MK1s can pull directly from an adjacent side of the machine. Uh, the MK2s allow you to do up to a certain range. Of course, the MK3s are cross-dimensional and also, I believe, uh, the infinite range normally. So uh, all of them are pretty powerful, but you want to kind of pick and choose what you're going to use. For example, I need to pull from my lectern into the buffer slot that this has, and then I want to send that over here. But I don't need to use a wireless system to do this, as it can just go right underneath. So this is where a puller module comes into play and they all have built-in filters. So I'm gonna pull from the top, so you can select from the machine. I'm gonna set this to whitelist so it only pulls the item that I put in this slot, and that is going to be the ingots. So when I put this inside here, you're gonna notice it should start pulling uranium ingots. It's gonna be pretty decent pace. It's gonna be pretty slow. Uh, of course, there are upgrades that you can use. Uh, I don't know why it is buffeting like that, <laughs> it should just be pulling it in with no problem. Oh, I think it's counting it as an inventory. Oh, yes. Okay, so this might be a problem. So yeah, that is one of the problems with uh, with this going directly next to it. So we actually will need a, uh, a further <laughs> setup for this. Let's go ahead and put the modular router away from this. Um, and this also show that it can go through blocks. And I guess we'll end up using the next tier of the modular router system here. Uh, we need a tier two puller. Uh, this is going to make the puller, there we go, uh, act the same way, but we can select the block that we want it to interact with. So you shift right click, and now it's selected the block, and then I'll put the filter in and make sure to whitelist it. Now it should be able to pull the item in without the worry of it going back into the other system. There we go. So you can see it shows the items transferring. Now I need to go all the way over there. And this is where I think uh, the cinder upgrade, the M2, MK2, isn't going to be able to reach this far. We'll see. Let's go ahead and right click this. That should set the input. And now we need to see, is this going to reach? I don't think by default it is. As you can see, it's out of range as we have a maximum of 24. So this is where the range upgrades are going to come into play. And uh, you have range down and range up augments. And these aren't too bad, the range augments. As you can see, they just require the combination of like paper and all these basic ingredients that we already have. Um, and uh, that makes the augment cores. And I don't think it takes too many of these to increase the range. However, these are augments and the augments change the module. So inside of here, this is where your augments will end up going. Uh, and let's see, is 12 going to be enough? It is. As you can see, the 12 is enough. It added 12 to the range and is now sending its inventory over to this. You can see the number going up now. So that's basically modular routers in a nutshell. Um, and of course, I may have I may have talked about this way more complicated than it needed to be. But uh, hopefully you got the gist of the, uh, the setup here. And this is plenty fast enough for sending that over. This isn't using really any at all like it's it's barely barely even consuming the amount that we had in there with the thousand rf that is currently being drawn from the network now of course you notice the orange lasers if you want to stop the orange lasers and you don't want to see them well this is where you're actually going to use the uh the upgrade and an upgrade actually goes into the top slot here and they can do a lot of things they can make it faster but they can also muffle uh, muffle is a very interesting concept, <laughs> or at least I think it's an interesting concept because it can change the sound of, of certain machines. Normally, that's how you would think of it is, uh, is it's muffling sound. But in this case, it will actually, after I believe two upgrades, it will stop the display of the lasers and the items being transferred, um, which I think is, is really nice if you don't want to have any of those visuals happening. Um, and I think there are other machines like placers and this will also allow it to deaden the sound of the placers. And then, last but not least, we have the camo upgrade. And if you want to facade this, this will be the best thing. You click the, you shift click the facade on the block you want it to look like, place in the upgrade slot, and it'll change the modular router to look like that block. In our case, it's just hidden, 
so we don't have to worry about it. But there we go. Look at that. We now have ourselves wireless item transfer. And this can also do power and can also wirelessly transfer fluids in the exact same way. However, for it to do fluid and power, you are going to need an upgrade uh, based on whether uh, it's going to be power or fluid. Now, of course, this isn't the last time you're going to see me using modular routers as the more I've learned about this mod, the more powerful it has become to me. And we're gonna use it for all kinds of stuff, including auto feeding ourselves and multiple, multiple things in the future. And so, if you wouldn't mind clicking that subscribe button, that way you don't miss one of those videos where I show how to use it in a very interesting way. Of course, guys, also be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode, and I hope you learned something new, especially about the Bigger Reactors mod, as this mod is fantastic, great early source of power, and is going to sustain us for quite a while, I think. So, guys, let's thank the supporter of today's video. And that huge thanks is going to go to DH. Thank you so much, my dude, over on the Discord, becoming a Discord Premium member, and supporting in one of the best ways possible. And of course, that is supporting via Discord with Discord Premium memberships. Guys, I thank you so, so very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and of course, as always, <laughs> yet again, thanks for watching. Bye!